students, welcome to Experimental Techniques and Material Characterizations, lecture number 24. I'm Dr. Parvez Ahmed. Uh, from this lecture, we will start our discussions on X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy that in short we call uh, XPS. Uh, this is the first part of the lecture. Uh, here on, uh, we will have a discussions on uh, the backgrounds of the XPS uh, spectroscopy. So let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture about uh, the XPS uh, backgrounds. So what is the background of the XPS techniques? So be remember, uh, XPS technique is based on the Einstein idea about the photoelectric effect uh, that was being developed around 1905. So what is the photoelectric effect? I think all the physicists, uh, I mean the, the, the people working in the field of physics, are the people who have studied the elementary uh, school level physics, they know about uh, the photoelectric effect. So in short, let me introduce, uh, I mean, let me tell, uh, tell, tell you about the photoelectric effect. That we just shine light uh, on, uh, on the metal surface. So uh, due to the threshold or the intensity, uh, the, the threshold uh, of that light, the electron is being uh, ejected from uh, the surface of a metal uh, so that, that is formally known as uh, photoelectric effect. So that's the more, I mean, informal definitions of the uh, photoelectric effect. I mean, uh, we shine a photons on a metal surface. So just because of the, uh, the threshold of that uh, photo, uh, 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 photons, the electrons are being ejected from the metal surface. So that, that is known as photoelectric effect and that was first uh, discovered or first observed by Albert Einstein uh, around 1905. So the concept of the photons uh, was used to describe the ejections of the electrons uh, from a surface uh, when photons were impinged upon it. So that is the key concept of the uh, XPS uh, or we can say that uh, X-ray photoelectron uh, spectroscopy. So who are the persons and uh, when that can be utilized uh, for the XPS? So we remember during the mid 1960s, uh, Dr. Sieben and his research group developed uh, the XPS uh, techniques. And the, the idea was, uh, the, uh, I mean, the idea for the development of the XPS uh, was taken from the Einstein uh, photoelectric effects. So in 1981, uh, for the finding of the XPS, uh, Dr. Sabins was awarded uh, the Nobel Prize in Physics uh, due to his development uh, in the uh, XPS uh, technique. I mean, Dr. Uh, Sabins developed the XPS technique. The idea was taken from the Albert Einstein photoelectric effect. And just because of his development, Dr. Sabins, uh, uh, he was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 1981. So now let, let's have a discussion on the X-rays that how X-ray work in the uh, XPS techniques. So uh, what we do actually, uh, we irradiate the sample uh, with the X-rays. So that basically, that, that X-ray uh, which we irradiated the surface, uh, it's basically uh, hit the core electrons of the atom. I mean, we utilize an X-ray beam uh, of particular intensity, uh, particular energy, so with that X-ray, we basically had the core electrons uh, of the atom. So the X-ray uh, after radiations, uh, I mean after hitting the surface, it penetrates the sample to a depth on the order of a micron. I mean, uh, uh, when we irradiate uh, this, the sample surface uh, with the X-ray, so these X-ray, uh, I mean, it's penetrated to the sample and how much it can penetrate uh, to the sample so here is the scale that is, I mean, uh, it's only penetrated to the sample, uh, I mean, uh, on the scale, uh, on the order of a micrometer. I mean, that is the, uh, the depth of, uh, for the penetration of the irradiated X-ray. So uh, what actually we get uh, with this, so when we irradiate the sample and these, uh, these X-ray, uh, I mean, penetrated to the materials, uh, with the order of one micron. So with that, we get useful electron signals from a depth of around 10 to uh, 10 to 100 angstrom on the surface. I mean, these X-rays, uh, when they penetrate 
uh, up to this level so uh, with this I mean we can get useful electron uh, single uh, and these signals I mean is being obtained uh, from a depth of around 10 to 100 angst from an surface so with that you can understand that uh, x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy is a surface sensitive uh, techniques and again we have a questions that why we utilize and why it's so important and uh, nanomaterial characterization so the fact is that uh, when we are answering about the importance of the uh, XPS for nanomaterial characterization so the fact is uh, why it's important so it's important because in nano we are saying that majority of the atom they are lying at the surface as compared to the volume so uh, XPS is again the same technique is only deal with the sample surface and uh, here's uh, we, we are we are discussing about the range of the x-rays I mean the uh, the penetration range of the x-rays and also the information that we are getting from the sample that is we get useful electron signals and here is the the range uh, I mean uh, the depth for uh, the electron from which we get uh, the useful information and it is around uh, it's only up to I think 10 nanometers I mean here you can say 10 to uh, 10 to 100 angstrom which is almost almost from 1 to uh, 10 uh, nanometer on uh, the surface I mean this is the sensitivity uh, I mean range of the uh, XPS uh, technique so it's all about uh, the surface so this is why uh, it's very important while dealing with the uh, nanomaterial uh, regarding the characterizations so the x-ray source uh, what actually we have in the uh, x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy we have the x-ray source so the x-ray source produces a uh, photon with the certain energies uh, depending upon uh, the source uh, if we have uh, magnesium K alpha photons so it will be with an energy of uh, 1253.6 electron volt and if we have aluminium K alpha photon so it will be with the energy of uh, 1486.6 uh, electrons volt I mean it depend upon the photon and the material from which uh, we uh, we have it or uh, we emit it in other words we can say that depend upon uh, the photon source so the energy depend upon uh, the photon source here uh, with this point of view so normally the samples will be radiated with a photon of a single energy uh, which might be uh, either uh, magnesium K alpha or aluminium K alpha and this is uh, known as monochromatic monoenergetic uh, x-ray beam I mean whether we use aluminium K alpha or uh, we use uh, magnesium K alpha so uh, either of these uh, is known as uh, monoenergetic uh, x-ray uh, beam now uh, the key concept uh, one of the key concept that is related uh, with the x-ray photoelectron uh, spectroscopy uh, that is uh, the core electrons so the people uh, the students uh, they might have a questions that what is mean by the core electron and uh, we already mentioned the role uh, of the core electron so let's clarify it again uh, what is the core electron and how it's been involved uh, uh, in uh, XPS uh, spectroscopy or X-ray port electron spectroscopy so for that uh, I mean for easy understanding you can have an example of the atom so you can see here an atom this is a proven atom so here at the center you know this is the uh, this is the nucleus and around the nucleus uh, we have an a shell a closest shell that is called one is one is, I mean the closest shells to uh, the nucleus uh, and this is the outermost shell so the closest uh, shell to the nucleus I mean the electrons and that shells which is I mean uh, very uh, close or we can say the closest electrons uh, to the nucleus uh, we call them as the core electrons and the outermost uh, I mean the electron in the outermost shells uh, they are being called as uh, the valence electron so here you can see I mean you can uh, clarify it for yourself I mean the concept of the core electrons and uh, valence uh, electrons so let uh, we have some formal definitions or some formal discussions for the 
uh, core electron and valence electrons. So, uh, an electrons uh, near the Fermi level is far from the nucleus, uh, moving in different directions on over, all over the place and will not carry information about a single atom. So, uh, what that mean? That mean that the Fermi level is the highest energy level acquired by an electron and a neutral solid at absolute uh, zero temperature. So, electron banding energy is calculated uh, with respect to uh, the Fermi uh, level. Uh, the core electrons, now with this perspective, uh, the core electrons are locally uh, close to the nucleus and have binding energy characteristic of their uh, particular uh, element. I mean, it have the characteristic of that particular atom. I mean, why we are taking the core electron? Because it has the characteristic of the uh, all the characteristic of the atom but if we consider the valence electrons so the valence electron do not have all the characteristics uh, of the atom and we also mentioned about here uh, the roles of the outermost electron that what is the role uh, they are being playing by the valence electron of the outermost electron and why we are taking the core electron so here we are mentioning the reason we are taking the core of the electron because the core electrons are locally close to the nucleus and have binding energies characteristic of their particular element. I mean, uh, the, uh, these electrons, they have the binding energy characteristic of the core uh, elements, uh, I mean, of that particular element uh, uh, in which uh, they are. So, the core electrons have a higher probability of matching the energies of aluminum K alpha and uh, magnesium uh, K alpha. So, uh, here we are, we, are, we are utilizing the terms uh, that uh, the core electrons, uh, I mean they are close to the nucleus and they have binding energy characteristics of their particular uh, elements. So, let's clar clarify a bit uh, the binding energy, uh, that what is mean by uh, the binding energy. So, here again, uh, means you should clarify your concept of binding energy here. So again, uh, I mean it's the it's the atom. You can consider it as an atom. So in atom, this is the nucleus, this is the core shell, and this is the valence shell. So here you can see that we have positive charge. Positive charge, you know, is because of the uh, proton inside the nucleus. This is the core shell. So here you can see that uh, we, we have the electron here. These electrons are attracted to the uh, protons uh, with a certain binding energy uh, which we have uh, I mean put here uh, by X and uh, here you can see uh, this is the the valence shell so uh, this is the point with the zero energy of attractions between the electrons uh, and the nucleus so at this point the electron is free uh, from the atom so the difference uh, between uh, these two levels is equal to the energy difference uh, between these two levels and this is known as uh, the binding energy. I mean uh, if we subtract we have certain energy of electron at this level and also certain energy at this level. So when we subtract uh, I mean this level energy from this level energy so this is known as uh, the binding energy of that particular uh, atom. So, let me clarify it again. The binding energy which we denoted on Be is the characteristic of the core electrons for each element. So, the binding energy is determined by the attractions of the electrons to the nucleus. So, if an electron with the energy X is pulled away from the nucleus, so the attraction between the, uh, the electrons and the nucleus decreases and the binding energy decreases. So, what happens? Uh, eventually, there will be a point when the electrons uh, will be free of the nucleus. I mean, that is how uh, the electrons that are being separated or they are being ejected from uh, the atoms or from the outermost shell, uh, shell or from the uh, core uh, shell. So, here you can further clarify your concept about uh, the energy level. So, here you can see. Uh, I mean different energy level. I mean we have uh, the lowest state of energy. Uh, we have uh, Fermi levels and we have a vacuum level. So here you can see that 
uh, I mean this is the lowest state of energy and here if you move the electrons uh, to the Fermi level I mean from this lowest state of energy we first move the electron to the Fermi level and then with the help of the work functions I mean the electron they are being pushed to the uh, vacuum level so here you can see that uh, at absolute zero Kelvin uh, the electrons are filled from the lowest energy states up I mean they come here so when the electron occupy up to this level uh, the neutral solid uh, is in at ground states I mean uh, when electron fill up this level so the, the atom is in at the ground state when we see flight energy I uh, mean a sufficient amount of the energy so that the electron leave this place I mean they are ejected from the atom so uh, the energy with which it is being ejected uh, from the atom so that energy I mean that is known uh, or, or we say that the work or the energy that is being supplied with which electron is emitted from uh, the Fermi level so that is known as the work fun function according to Einstein explanations of the photoelectric uh, effect so I hope you, you understand the basic or the background of the uh, uh, XPS uh, spectroscopy. So that's all we have for this part of the lecture. I mean uh, lecture number 24. I mean that's the end. Uh, but stay tuned with the lecture number 25. That will be the second part on the uh, lect uh, lecture series on the X-ray portal electron spectroscopy. Uh, and the second part. Uh, I mean in lecture number 25 we will have a discussion on the XPS uh, instrument so stay tuned with the next lecture till then bye bye